homesteading to prepping to common horse sense, we are College Hill Farm. Morning, baby. That's probably not a good place to be. Welcome back to College Hill Farm. Well, today <clears throat> I need to start back on my greenhouse. This is August the 18th and it's a, a nice brisk 60 degrees, 62 degrees this morning. You know, August we start getting these cool mornings that uh, you can work up till 1 or 2 o'clock before it's into the 80s. And, so I need to, I'm ready to get back on the uh, greenhouse, but it's kind of grown up around the greenhouse. So I want to weed eat all that. Well, my back just can't take the handheld weed eater. Now, I think three years ago, uh, we went and bought this uh, Cub Cadet push weed eater. Uh, you know, I messed up my shoulder and I needed something that I could weed eat with uh, that didn't require me to hold it with that shoulder. So we bought that, and uh, I've not been satisfied with it at all. Uh, it seems like every time I have to use it, I need to work on it. Uh, it fouls plugs. Of course, uh, I may have overfilled the oil the first time it fouled the plug, so that may have been my fault. Uh, since then, I've remedied that problem. Uh, but it's still, you saw this morning, it won't start. Uh, and I made sure it had fresh gas in it. And of course, that's the first time I've tried to start it this year. Uh, but I made sure it had fresh gas and uh, I changed the spark plug. Since it wouldn't start, that's your first step. Change the spark plug. Uh, could the problem be the ignition coil? It absolutely could be the ignition coil. But uh, I'm, I'm just going to tell you, I've had to work on this thing almost every time I've used it. It has been a pure lemon. Luckily, I've got plenty of time. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take the carburetor off of this and clean it. Now, I'm a little low on carburetor cleaner. So what do you need to take the carburetor off? Well, for me... I need a pair of uh, vice grips to clamp the uh, fuel line off because this doesn't have no place to shut the fuel line off. So you need those. I need a pair of uh, lineman's pliers to uh, take the hose clamps off. I need a pair of little needle nose pliers to take the springs and things off out from under. I need a flat blade screwdriver for, for prizing around on stuff. And I'm not sure which one of these I'll need. It's either a 10 millimeter metric wrench or a 11 millimeter. I don't remember which one it is. But most of the stuff on here is 10 millimeters. And I brought me a little pair of channel locks just in case I can't get something loose. You'll also need a set of sockets, metric standard. Uh, nothing big, just a little 3 8 socket set. And finally, this is torch tip cleaners. This is what you use to clean the tips of your torches. Okay? I'll use probably these top four here, the smallest ones, uh, to clean the ports in this carburetor. Now, I'm betting that the carburetor is just not working good. Uh, 
I would have thought that the, the clean gas would have made a difference, but I don't know. I'm going to take this bowl off. There might be gunk down in the bowl, too. So, it's... Uh, when I took the spark plug off, there was no gas on the spark plug. So, that means it's running lean. Uh, the spark plug, if there was any gas there, it burned it off, but it didn't offer to hit. So, it doesn't have enough gas to make it hit. So, let's get this carburetor off and see uh, what we can do. Right here is the air breather. Now, it's got uh, a thing that you can just twist it off. So, I'm going to twist it off and take that off. Here's the air filter, nice and clean. Uh, I don't see any oil in here. I don't smell any gas. So that's another indication that it wasn't putting out any gas. So before we get started, we want to make sure that this, right here, this fuel line is clamped off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, well, before I do that, I'm going to take this off. I may not be able to get it off because of this cowl. So I'm going to go ahead and take the cowl off too. In order to take the cowl off, in order to take this cowl off, well, the bolts are down in here. You would think that this doesn't uh, come off, but the truth is, this part, if you can get a screwdriver down in there, just comes, prize up. Okay, it's just got four little clips that hold it on. And then right here are three number 10 bolts nuts so I'm gonna go ahead and take those loose one now I'll use my little One, two, Okay, that's got those three nuts off. Now, this is the uh, pull cord, okay? But it just lifts off because it just catches in these grooves right here. So I'm just gonna set it up over here, out of the way, let it hang. Now, let's take this cowl off. And it includes Well, better off to take that hose loose first. So now took the cow loose where I could get to it. Now we come back over here and let's take these two off right here and take this carburetor cover off where we can get to other stuff. Exactly the same nuts that's on the cowl. 10 millimeter. Now let's pull this off. Now there's a little breather hose back there. Oh, my gas cap's are leaking. Ah, okay. There's a little breather hose back there. Ah, right here that this goes into. And if you look, oh, that looks like water instead of, uh, that looks like water instead of gas. Oh no, it feels like oil. Anyhow, 
Now, this is ready to take off. Watch out for these, okay? This one was had come out. These go in here. Go in here. So when you get one that comes out, put your finger over it and press it back in there. I can't do it and show. There it is, pressed back in, right there. So you don't wanna lose those. Now, the carburetor is ready to take off right here. But before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and take this, uh, go away spider. I'm gonna take this gas tank off. It'll just make life so much simpler. Now what I want to do is I want to take this and clamp off that hose. You don't have to do it super tight. You remember the hose has a certain thickness. So that's clamped off so that it can't leak. Now when I take this loose, there's going to be some gas flow out. This tank, this should be full of gas. So I'm going to take that off. Let me move over here so I'm not knocking the camera over. Now the clamp, you just reach here, get a hold of these two little tips, close it, and then slide it over off of the end. Now I should be able to pull that loose. Of course it's gonna be tight. So let's enlist a little help. These things get on there so tight sometimes. They just can't hardly come loose. They get kind of stuck to it. Now let's see what we got. There we go. Got it loose. Now I can take this gas tank and all and just sit over here to the side. All right, that gets us down to the carburetor. So let's get started. Now there's uh, two or three things here that have to come loose. This has to come loose and it sits over the sits over the throttle feed okay and helps the governor work this one okay and then this one of course is the governor it has this little spring on it so let's go ahead you want to be certain not to lose these Take this one loose. Move that over here out of the way. Now this can't come loose because it's tied in there until we take this other stuff loose. So I'm going to start up here, right here, and this just comes off. Now I can take that loose. Set it over here as well. Now I've got a spring right here. And my old hands are not what they used to be. So in order to get that spring off, I use, rather than use my fingers, which are just old big and in the way, I use this little pair of pliers. And finally, this part presses in. So I'm going to turn it around there, and I'm going to pry it up, and 
there it is. Now this carburetor now, set this off over here. This carburetor is ready to come off. Now here's another gasket. I'm going to take it off just so I don't drop it somewhere, all right? Okay, take that gasket off. And now this carburetor just slides off. Now, it is full of gas, okay? It's full. So what I want to do is I want to get that gas out of there. Well, as long as that float's working, I can't get that gas out of there. So, in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and take this bolt, this nut loose. I think it's a number 10. See, that's an 11, so that's not it. Like most things, they're number 10s. Alright, now I'll just take that loose. And I'm going to take it all the way out of there. Let that gas just come out. I know, gas is carcinogenic and this, that, and the other. I'm catching it in a cup down here. Now, this nut has a little gasket on it. I'm going to set it down here. Now, this comes off and there's a little gasket right there that you don't want to lose. Because if that little gasket don't go back on there, then you're messed up. Now, if we look down in this bowl... There's a little bit of debris in there, but not much. I'm really uh, shocked that there isn't more debris than that. So I'm going to clean this bowl out good. Okay, that's got the bowl about as clean as I can get it. Set it off over here. Now, let's talk about this carburetor. But before we do that, let's go into a clean spot. Working on this carburetor in the dirty out here is probably a huge, huge, huge mistake. Okay, I just cleared me a space here at my saw table. Uh, someplace I cleared, wiped off the, the dust and all that stuff. So now, what I need to do is I need to use this, and I'm going to get the second to smallest cleaner out. It's this one right there. To clean these ports. Now, if you look at the way this is made, there is a Back here is the way that air and gas is allowed to get into the carburetor. Okay, this is up against the, the intake manifold, and this is, the, this is the part that lets in the air and the gas. This part right here is the choke. It determines the air and the gas. Okay, when you first start one of these... Uh, one of these lawnmowers, or a lawnmower, or a weed eater, or whatever, this is closed. But after it starts, the thing opens it based on how warm it is outside, or how warm the intake is. You'll notice that, this, or how warm the muffler is. You'll notice that the wire that goes to this right here is on the muffler. As the muffler heats up, this opens all the way up. Okay, and lets the air in. Now, so one of the things that can happen is, is when the engine is cold, it cuts down on the amount of air. So if the engine's not getting enough gasoline, then it runs good when the engine's cold. 
But then when the engine opens up and warms up, this opens all the way up and lets in a lot more air. The perfect combination of air to, uh, to fuel ratio is 14 to 1. 14 parts air to 1 part fuel. Well, if this is closed 14 to 1 and it's receiving it good, then this is working real good. But if this opens up, it lets in a lot more air and you can have 20 to 1, uh, 30 to 1, okay, the amount of air. If it's running good with it's like that, but when it opens all the way up, it'll surge. And this will close, open and close, open and close, open and close. Because it's not getting sufficient fuel. So, the first thing I want to do is clean all these little ports. Right here's a port. Right here's a port. Okay, they go all the way back into this engine. Then right here is where the fuel goes in to go into the carburetor, to go into the inner workings of the carburetor. And it goes through this little, there's a little port right there. I don't know how well you can see that. Let me put a little more light on it. Can you see the port down in there? So there's a port down in there with a hole just big enough that this little bitty pipe clean, this little bitty cleaner will go through it, torch tip cleaner. So now, but before I do that, I want to take the float off. And when you take the float off, Shake that, shake it, and see if it's got gas in it. If it doesn't, everything's good. Now, here's one little problem. Look at how nasty that looks on the tip. Okay, so I want to take, this is called a needle valve, and I want to wipe any excess stuff off that needle valve. Now this is this only is where the gas comes in from the tank, okay? It's only where the gas comes in from the tank. Now let's take that, set it right here. Now we've got these ports to clean. Well, I'm going to start off with this port. You just stick that right down through it, go all the way through, and make sure that entire port is cleared out. The truth is, that port very seldom gets blocked. Okay? Very seldom. So I'm going to go up in size because it needs a bigger one. I'm going to go up to this size. Now the way these work is, they have little ridges on them. So they can file away any gunk. So Okay. Go in from this side. Yes, I just blew that to make sure that that's clear. Now, we want to make sure that these two holes right here are clear, and they're just clear as a bell. So there's no reason to put nothing in them. Now we want to clear this port because this is how the gasoline gets into the carburetor. It comes up through these holes and then up through that port. So I'm going to use a smaller one. Clean this port. Okay, that was still too big. So I got to go smaller. Next size down. Now 
Okay, that goes all the way through to the back side of that carburetor. And I'm going to waller it. Now, let's check these ports right here. Clean them the same way. Now that I've got these ports cleaned out, and I know that they have flow through, I'm going to use carb and throttle body cleaner and spray right into each port. Okay, I'm not going to do that in here because I don't want to smell this stuff. So I'm going to take this out and spray these. Now, one telltale sign that this unit has problems, that it's a was had a design problem. See this right here? This gasket material should be the same size as the hole. Okay, but what they've done is they've made this gasket material come up and cover everything. Now, why do you suppose they did that? Well, they did it to be a heat shield. Uh, they did not plan well for this carburetor to be away from the head gasket, the head, enough that it uh, didn't get too hot. So when this gets hot, I bet you this carburetor has problems anyway. And this was their solution, which is a piss poor solution. But that's neither here nor there. Now, I've blown out all the ports. So this carburetor should be ready to uh, open back up, to fix back up. Now you'll notice that right here is a port that goes around, okay, and it lets stuff come out right there. Now this port comes from, from back here. but it actually has no, no function in this uh, carburetor. So there's this extra port that's there and I'm gonna clean it, but it really has no function in this carburetor. It's probably for a different machine but they use these carburetors on several machines. And this is a Briggs and Stratton engine. You know, I'm a, I'm a Briggs and Stratton fan. One more time through there. Make sure these are cleared out. I'm a Briggs and Stratton fan. Now, we want to put the needle valve back on. Okay, this goes right like this, and the needle valve seats down in there. Now, we want to align our holes back up and put our pin back in. Come on. My old fat fingers ain't what they used to be. Well, they're still old fat fingers, but there we go. That's got my pin back in there. You want to put the pin in so that it's about the same distance on each side. There's nothing that clips that pin in. It just sits in there, loose. So now, this is ready to go back on the mower. And this goes just like that right there. 
Okay, so let's go get this back on the mower and uh, see if this fixed my problem. If this didn't fix the problem, then I need to check the uh, spark coil. That's probably the next thing. I've changed spark plugs on it already, but that's the very first thing you do, change the spark plug if it don't start. So I've changed the spark plug and uh, now it's time to uh, put this on, see if this fixed my problem or if I've got another problem. Okay, that's how uh, you uh, clean the carburetor on a Cub Cadet push weed eater. Uh, a lot of little Briggs and Stratton's engines are exactly that same way. Uh, this one was uh, 140 cc's. So, if you like this stuff, this homesteading, do-it-yourself kind of thing, be certain to come on out to the channel and subscribe. Uh, if you hit the little bell when you come to the channel, it'll notify you when we upload a video. We upload on Sundays. Also, we've added a new blog. Uh, we used to have our blog at uh, www.collegehill.com, but we have discontinued that, uh, that uh, server. So, we have a new blog at Blogspot. We'll leave a link in the community tab of our... Uh, channel page so you can go to the community tab and it will let you you can be able to find our blog that we do every Wednesday now with that being said it's time for me to get on to the next thing and get over here and clean some of this junk out around the greenhouse and get started on it again